Sure, thank you. Uh, well, you know, the way I look at it is <coughs> Again, like the energy discussion, we need to be looking at this across the board. And I talked about the GAO report already. Anybody who's, you know, looking to see, to you know, really depress yourself about how much waste and duplication there is in government, or if you're looking for help and want to sleep at you know, the end of the day, um, this is a really helpful document. And it goes through, there's so much waste and duplication. So what I said yesterday, absolutely, is we need to have smarter government. And we need to be looking at where we can shape. I wouldn't make, uh, you know, I don't think that three workers to two workers and all that, I don't think every agency is the same. I don't think that every program is the same. I think we need to be doing an assessment program by program, which frankly is exactly what the GAO report does. It goes through and it makes recommendations about where we can be finding revenue and where we can be cutting costs. So what th that I would do across the board. I talked about some areas already where I mentioned we're not we're not doing everything we should be. That would even on the big picture issues like collecting the taxes that are due. The fact that we could shave a trillion dollars off of our deficit by a combination of collecting a fraction of the taxes that are owed and putting out big big contracts for bid. Why haven't we done that years ago? This is exactly the kind of approach as a business owner I would be taking, looking at this in a smart way, targeted way, to cut as much as we can without burdening, like the Ryan budget did, seniors and middle class families. Thank you. This is for you. That's somewhat of a follow up to the last question. Will you support moving new public employees' pensions to 401k formats? Yes or no? No. Mr. Fitzpatrick? If, if, you're, if a 401k is a uh, defined contribution plan as opposed to a defined benefit plan, some public employees need to start moving to defined contribution, yes. Thank you. Mr. Fitzpatrick, this is for you. Does Iran have the right to enrich uranium? Under what circumstances would you lift the sanctions? Under no circumstances at present would I lift the sanctions. I, I, I uh, co-sponsored some of those sanctions. I argued for those sanctions. I voted for the sanctions. Uh, uh, we need to reduce the threat of a nuclear Iran. Uh, we need to eliminate their ability to obtain nuclear weapons. Under those circumstances, uh, should they be permitted uh, to continue uh, to enrich uranium, for the purpose of obtaining nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, the current administration and our president has not fully enforced and carried out the sanctions that are authorized by the United States Congress while at the same time permitting light to appear and get between the position of the United States of America and the state of Israel, which is our closest and only real power in the Middle East. And so we live in difficult and dangerous times right now. And we need to be very careful about how we proceed. But if the question is, would I lift the sanctions on Iran? Absolutely not. I would, I would strengthen them. And more importantly, I would support a president who will enforce them. Thank you. Please. I would have to say, you know, I mean, I, I guess if we eliminated all need for sanctions and, you know, if we had a completely different government in Iran uh, where we were moving forward towards, you know, a democratic process there. but. Under the current circumstances and circumstances that I can foresee, the, the economic war that we're waging there is working, and we need to keep it up. Uh, we cannot allow Iran to develop a nuclear bomb. Period, and that's a national security issue, and it's an international security issue. And I think we absolutely need to continue to enforce these sanctions and make sure that that this continues <coughs> to work. Thank you. This question is for you. Do you support the UN call to boycott U.S. companies doing business in Israel? No. no. Mr. Fitzpatrick, would you repeat that again? Do you support the UN call to boycott U.S. companies doing business in Israel? No. Thank you. Mr. Fitzpatrick, government has placed many speed bumps in the path of recovery of our real estate industry. What needs to be done to help the vital segment of our economy, and particularly the possibility of change of the mortgage interest deduction and the implementation of dot frame? Uh, first of all, on the issue of the mortgage interest deduction, I, I fully and completely support uh, the mortgage interest deduction. I remember 
like I think not so long ago that Kathy and I were buying our first home. The existence of the ability and the right of a young couple, first time home buyer, to deduct the interest paying on a mortgage, the biggest asset a married couple will ever acquire, um, that made the difference between our ability to purchase a home and not purchase a home. And if you believe as I do, that the real estate economy is so significant that it will be the catalyst that will lift us out of this recession, uh, continuation of the mortgage interest deduction is critical. And so it's one of the few deductions that I would continue to support, and, and I will fully support it. Uh, Dodd-Frank was another one of the uh, well-intentioned federal uh, pieces of legislation passed in the last uh, couple of years um, that has caused a lot of havoc um, in the community, including the real estate community. And I'll give you one example. I worked as a member of the Financial Services Committee opposing the Housing Urban Development HUD's um, insistence um, that they clamp down on homeowners associations and the ability of individuals and anybody here who lives in a, in a planned community with a homeowners association, your ability to resell your properties. They were requiring all sorts of certificates and guarantees from homeowners associations that um, were unreasonable. And so I took on HUD, I took on the Secretary of HUD and backed them down uh, because what the net effect was that those of you who live in homeowners associations, your va the values of your homes were being decreased. Those are the sort of actions, your actions, not words. Thank Those you. are the actions I've taken on behalf of homeowners and Thank investors you. here in Folks County. Ms. Bukwar. Bukwar. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I absolutely support continuing the mortgage interest deduction and you know, fully agree that it's, it's something that makes it helpful for all of us. Look, the, the housing and uh, financial crises were devastating. They devastated our economy. We need to make sure this never happens again. Don Frank is far from a perfect bill, but I think the most important thing that it did was it started a process of making sure we implement consumer protections to make sure that we, as Americans, don't find ourselves in this crisis again, whether it's, and, and it's all, again, I, I mentioned earlier on, I tend to see everything as interrelated. I look for comprehensive reforms. We can't separate the housing crisis from the financial crisis. It all fed into each other, and we are the ones who are at risk. So I want to make sure that that never happens again. I want to make sure we have the consumer protections. At the same time, I don't want Dodd-Frank to end up being a burden on community banks, on credit unions. We need to make sure that this is implemented well. It's going to need to be fixed over time. It's absolutely not a perfect bill, but it took some good steps forward. Thank you. This question is back to you. How do you plan to keep the Medicare, how do you plan to keep Medicare solvent for future generations of senior citizens? Great question. On everybody's mind. Uh, well, I'll, I'll start out by saying I would not do it by how the Ryan budget did it, which comes with the statute voting for twice, which would end Medicare as we know it, and force seniors and soon-to-be seniors into a private insurance system with vouchers, causing costing thousands of dollars more for health care every year, gutting and devastating Medicaid, which tens of thousands of residents in our in our district rely on, and also got, making it harder for us to send our kids to college. What I would do are many things. One, we need to deal with health care fraud. We, there's, there's, this is a major problem in this country. It costs billions of dollars that we could save. Two, we need to allow Medicare to negotiate drug prices with pharmaceutical companies. We would save $200 billion over the next 10 years by doing that. Three, we need to put into effect cost containment measures, not which would not just address the Medicare problem, it would address health care all across the country. Right now, we spend over 17%, we being the United States, spends over 17% of our gross domestic product on health care. 11.4%, it's one of the highest in the world. If the next closest country, comparable country, spends 11.8% of their gross domestic product on health care costs. If we were to shave our health care costs down to 11.8%, we would save $870 billion every single year. And we spend 11 cents on every dollar more for administrative costs than any other country. Our private insurance system does. If we focus on cost containment, we will not only help save Medicare, but we'll lower the cost for all of us. So if you, if you listen, please. 